good day, everyone. Let's talk about the meaning of the third house. Stellium. The third house. Number three. So this is for anybody with a third house stellium. And pay attention, anybody listening who is a rising sign of Gemini or Virgo, has their midheaven in Gemini or Virgo, has their descendant in Gemini or Virgo, or their IC in Gemini or Virgo. And why am I saying that? Because Mercury is the ruler of Gemini and Virgo. And if you have Mercury in the third house, it's coming all the way back to the third house every time. So your rising sign likes to express itself in a third house way. Your midheaven does, your descendant, and your IC. So let's get started and look a little deeper. The third house is the Gemini house. It's an air house. What is air? Everywhere. It likes to get around. It rules the hands and the arms. The lungs. Are you even breathing today, dear? Right? And it rules the nervous system. Do you have planetary energies that like to express themselves with their arms, their hands, breathing? This can be anything, right? We use our arms and hands all the time. You can use them on social media. You can use it with your smartphone. You can use it on your laptop. You can use it on the phone. You can use it with your neighbor. You can use it at the grocery store. You're active. You're busy. You're moving. When you walk, you move your arms. When you play the piano, you use your arms and hands. When you're running, when you're doing yoga, breath work. Breath work is very important to Gemini. The lungs, lots of Gemini energies like breath work. And yoga or anything about, you know, slowing down the nervous system because they're the ones that know how to do it because they're the ones that carry all that energy of wanting to be on the go. And it can be nervous sometimes. It's true because it can be overload. When you think about a lot of stimulation, that's the Gemini house. So, okay, let's see. I got up this morning. I'm going to have breakfast. Then I got to go to work, and I'm a lawyer, and I got to go to trial. And then after that, I'm going to go home, see the family. And then after that, I think I'm going to take a short road trip because I really like to have windshield time in. It's fun for me. I want to meet some friends that I know in the cities close to my house. This is kind of that energy there. I got to be on the go. I may love windshield time. I may love to be in my car. I may have a thing for cars. I may want to buy a car. I could have a secret sports car and you'd never even know. As long as I get to take it out and drive it, it's all good. That's the energy, the third house, all about communications and writing. Are you listening to me? How are your communication skills? Do you speak well? Are you about learning to speak? Are you an English teacher? Are you an elementary school teacher? Are you an attorney? Are you an orator? Are you a TED Talk? Are you a podcaster? Are you a social media person? Are you a YouTuber? Do you write journals? Do you write articles? Do you write for the paper? Do you write for your neighborhood watch areas? Are you into your neighborhoods? Are you, what about your siblings? How's that relationship? Communications, writing, teaching, learning, listening, your car, your arms, your hands, your lungs, breath work, the nervous system. Let's do this. Okay. Lots of entertainment going on here. When I use my hands and my arms, you can see more, right? It's more entertaining than if I just stand in front of you and say, hello. It's more entertaining, right, when I say hello and then I show you something or I do something with my hands and my arms and oh my gosh, and you can't take your eyes off me because I'm so entertaining because I know how to work all this. And I'm a great piano player, by the way. I also love to play the guitar, the saxophone, you name it, I'm into it. Oh yes, I'm a famous lawyer. 
I'm a great teacher. I won many teacher awards for my communication skills and my teaching skills. And I have a big thing for learning because I do get bored easily. So that's the energy of the third house. So now let's look at what planetary energies you carry there. If you have the sun there, you shine in this third house way. If you have the moon there, you're driven by the energies of the third house. Maybe you're driven by using your arms or your hands in the work that you do, in the music that you play, in your smartphone activities. Maybe you have a thing where you just got to keep your fingers and hands going and dexter, you know, all that stuff. Maybe you use, maybe you're into data entry. Maybe you like to, you know, whatever it is, right? It's a a variety of things. So Mercury, so this is the one, flash, flash, pay attention to this, Mercury, Mercury, Mercury. Do you have Mercury there? If you have Mercury there in your stellium, you have, you're not going to be able to get away from this house is basically, I guess, what I'm trying to say, okay? Because remember, your rising sign of Virgo or Gemini is reporting to Mercury, and so you go right to that third house. So again, if you have Gemini or Virgo on any of your angles... That means Mercury is the ruler of that angle. And he is in the third house. And he's saying, this is what I'd like you to focus on. Okay? Remember that. Mercury there. Tons of focus in this house. This is where Mercury loves to be. If you have Venus in the third. Love. What you love. How you like to make your money. Who you love in a third house way. Maybe you're drawn to partners that are Geminis or people that are very intelligent or people that are entertainers. Anything could go. Mars in the third. Similar to Venus, there's a sexual attraction to third house people and partners that exhibit these characteristics or traits. Maybe you can't understand why you are in love with a piano player or you're in love with a guitarist, or you're in love with an entertainer, or you just can't stop watching a YouTuber. Maybe you are in love with someone who moves around. They have movement. Maybe you're in love with your yoga teacher. You know, any of that plays out. Jupiter in there, that's about expansiveness, abundance in a third house way. Remember, Jupiter can be like, here you go. You get the entire case, not just one item. You get it all. And so you can have a ton of this energy, okay? You could want to learn. You could be lucky in this way. You could publish. You could expand. You could inspire. Saturn, of course, he always has to come in and spoil everything. Sorry, but he does a lot of the times. So Saturn here is like, who do you think you are? I'm going to restrict you. You're going to have to work hard. Oh, so you want to be an orator? You want to be a lawyer? You want to be an entertainer? Guess what? You got work to do. Get started now. You could find that you have to work on your communications or you work in communications. It could be either or. You can find it's a challenge for you or you can find that you work as a profession in a third house way. There's lots of things that can be applicable to the third house. Again, air is everywhere. Okay? I'm going to end there on the third house stellium. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.